Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul United Church of Christ, Keokuk. children come forward for the children's sermon? Okay, you're first. You're the first one here. So you have to help me. 
Going on? Yes, okay. Come on over here. Come on over here. You hide over there, okay? You hide right there behind the pulpit. Okay, you come over here. You hide right over here, okay? Stand right there. Okay, now you come and hide over here. Stand right there. Hide, okay. You get to hide behind the piano here. <clears throat> yeah, right behind the piano. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. There's one sheep. Where are my other sheep? Where are they? Why are they hiding from me? Why did they wander off? Where are my sheep? Where are my sheep? Did I see the head of a sheep someplace? Oh, there's one. Come on over. Okay. Come on over and sit down in the front there. Where's my sheep? Oh, there's a sheep right over there. Okay. You wandered off over there and you're hiding. Are there more sheep back there? Did I see a little head come up here? Yeah, there, there, there are more sheep. Come on over. All right. Come on over. Okay, I see that sheep there. <laughs> All right, sheep. Come on over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we got all these sheep here. All right, that's, that's what Jesus does for us. Can you all go back? Okay, the congregation on three. Can you all go back? One, two, three. Right, okay. See, we're all like, we're kind of like sheep. Sheep will sometimes wander and go off someplace. And uh, Jesus comes and finds us. Even though we wander away, Jesus comes and finds us. And we wander away sometimes just because we're not thinking too much about Jesus. And sometimes it's because we're interested in something else. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then Jesus calls us and talks to us and calls us back. And that's our good shepherd. Do you know why Jesus does that? Do you know why? Because he loves us. Because he loves us, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray together. Lord, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. That you find us. That you find us. And protect us. And protect us. And bring us back. And bring us back. As our good shepherd. As our good shepherd. Amen. Amen. Very good. Okay, you can all go back to your seats. Don't get lost. During the time of Jesus, society was agricultural. People were used to herding livestock. And uh, in our modern world, we're sometimes not accustomed to that, even though we live in Iowa. The natural world doesn't seem quite as close because uh, in some ways uh, we don't really get that close to agriculture because it's big farming these days and that sort of thing. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, in the days of the family farm, I was on the farm and it came as a big surprise to me that some people felt that uh, eggs came from a factory. And I could have sworn that they came from chickens, but they thought they came from a factory. One day in Los Angeles, uh, the smog cleared uncharacteristically one night, and people were calling in because uh, they had never seen the Milky Way. And uh, it, was, it was different for them. They thought something was wrong. So it takes a little bit of explaining that... Uh, that we're sheep, or compared to sheep, and that Jesus is our shepherd, but during the time of Jesus, there were a lot of shepherds, and there were a lot of sheep. The shepherd was responsible for them. <clears throat> the shepherd would take them uh, by calm waters, and the shepherd had to take them by calm waters, because I can tell you, if they had rough waters, you can bet that the sheep would fall in. They'd fall in, and then they'd get all soaked, and they'd drown. 
because sheep were not that good at taking care of themselves. They shared probably a little bit with uh, domestic turkeys a tendency to get into trouble because a turkey, if you leave it out in the rain and it feels the raindrops hit it, you know, on the head, it'll look up into the air and with its mouth open and drown. Yeah, so sheep would get into trouble too, so you took them by quiet waters that were safe. <clears throat> you took them to green pastures as a shepherd. You watched over them because they couldn't <clears throat> take care of themselves very well. They needed a shepherd. They would soon be into trouble. <clears throat> One of the things that we really forget these days is that we need a shepherd. We need the good shepherd. We need the good shepherd because we are not in and of ourselves complete unless we have a shepherd who will watch over us because none of us are knowledgeable enough, none of us are able to take care of ourselves enough that we don't run into trouble and we need that shepherd to take care of us. They would often refer to the shepherd as having a staff and a rod because predators would come Predators would come and take advantage of the flock and try to eat some of the sheep. <clears throat> and these days we have a very similar thing. We have an opioid epidemic. We have people, <clears throat> 60,000 people a year roughly dying of overdose. Small town. Fentanyl is mixed in with heroin and that sort of thing. You see, we need a shepherd <clears throat> who's going to protect us from predators, people who would prey upon us <clears throat> in various ways. We have people that call us on our cell phones, want us to give up personal information. Well, of course, all of us are pretty much alert to that, but uh, nevertheless, you're preyed upon. We have uh, people who tell us that we don't really need a spiritual life, but, you know, to follow whatever the ways of the world are. But again, we're preyed on by what's out there. You know, it wants to take advantage of us. So none of us have the resources in and of ourselves. We need God's protection, just like sheep need God's protection. We need God's protection. We are not sufficient to ourselves. We are not sufficient to ourselves. We'd maybe like to say that we are. We'd maybe like to say that we have enough wisdom to be able to take care of ourselves. But you know what? <clears throat> we are not sufficient to ourselves. We need a good shepherd. We run into trouble without the good shepherd. All we need to do is look out into the world and see people try to get along without that good shepherd, and we know that we need a shepherd. We need the comfort that the shepherd brings, the rod and the staff to protect us, sometimes from ourselves, but quite often from things that are out in the world. We need that protection. We need that rock. <clears throat> and one of the problems is that because of sin, we have a tendency to wander off. The responsibilities of a shepherd we see in Psalm 23 are to bring us to green pastures, to put us beside quiet waters, to help us to walk in paths of righteousness. But we have a tendency to wander off of those paths, you see. We have a real tendency to wander because of sin. But even when we're in the most trying times, even when that tendency is strong, we can look up at our shepherd and see that rod and that staff which will protect us. And remember that our shepherd provides a table before us in the presence of our enemies, anoints our head with oil, and goodness and love will follow us all the days of our lives as long as we're walking with the shepherd. We walk with the shepherd, goodness will follow us all the days of our lives. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever if we walk with the shepherd. 
The shepherd of the psalm leads us down the right paths, protects us, fulfills our needs, and we simply can't do without that shepherd's protection and without that shepherd's guidance. But sin would lead us away from our shepherd. We'd wander. And we have many, many, many indications in, in song, Burl Ives, for example, where God had to seek out the one person, the one shepherd, the one sheep that had been lost. We have many instances in which we are reminded of how we can be lost, of how the good shepherd has to seek us when we've fallen off a cliff and we're on a rock shelf and we're hanging on for dear life. But we know that that shepherd is going to come. Even though sin has led us a bit astray, has led us to not look at our shepherd, we know that that shepherd is going to come. We can fail, yes, but if we have faith in that shepherd, we know that the shepherd will come. So <clears throat> we find ourselves having a tendency to wander, but our faith is strong that the shepherd will help us. The disciples had the same difficulties in following that shepherd. It was hard for them to focus on that shepherdship long enough, to focus on the shepherd long enough for the shepherd to actually take care of them. And Peter had that problem when he walked on the water. You see, when he walked on the water, the water, even if it had been oblique, would not hold him up. Anybody familiar with Ublek? Are you familiar with Ublek? Okay, all right. It's really from the 1949 Dr. Seuss book, Bartholomew and the Ublek. Ublek is the kind of thing that you can bunch it all up. You can make this stuff. You can, you can bunch it all up into a ball, and if you just let it sit there, you'll just run through your hand. You can have a dish full of it, and you can slap it, and it won't spray away, because the harder you hit it, the harder it becomes. It's kind of an odd thing. If you want to get real technical about it, they call it a non-Newtonian fluid. You can forget all about that. Just keep in mind that that wouldn't even have saved Peter. See, he came walking out. Jesus was walking on the water, and he came walking out uh, because Jesus had invited him out. But something happened. You see, if you got oblick instead of water, you got to keep walking. If you don't keep walking, you're going to sink, even with that stuff. Well, Peter would never have even been saved by that. Listen to the story of what happened. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and to go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed them, he went up <clears throat> on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. On the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come out to you on the water. Peter, always adventurous, you know, always trying things. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they had climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Peter would not even have been saved by Ublek. You have to keep walking. You have to keep hitting it. All he saw around him were the waves. He had taken his eyes off of the good shepherd Jesus. 
he had stopped. And when he stopped, he began to sink. Similar for us, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to keep our eyes on the Good Shepherd. We need to keep our eyes on the shepherd who leads us. If we don't keep our eyes on the shepherd, then everything around us in life will overwhelm us and we'll begin to, sh we'll begin to sink. Peter was so preoccupied with the waves, he was afraid, took his eyes off of Jesus, took his eyes off the good shepherd. And when he did, he felt himself beginning to sink. Our good shepherd is there. <clears throat> and we the sheep keep our eyes on the good shepherd because that way we can walk toward the good shepherd no matter what. And we can prevail in life. Our situation is very similar to that of, of Peter. You know, when we're most vulnerable to danger... We are most vulnerable to danger when we take our eyes off of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we don't even know that it's there. See, that's the odd part. As soon as we take our eyes off the Good Shepherd, as soon as we take our eyes off the Good Shepherd, then all we see is danger. All we see is being overwhelmed. But if we keep our eyes on that good shepherd, we don't even know that the danger is there. I once talked to an advertiser, <clears throat> and he said, we print all kinds of advertising. And he said, we have a goal in serving our customers. <clears throat> All we want our customers to see is that their advertising is there and there are no problems. That's all we want our customers to see. And as far as they have faith in us, then they don't have to be concerned about any problems. As far as we have faith in the Good Shepherd, we don't have to be concerned about any problems. As a matter of fact, we won't even see those problems. And if we do, if we're afraid, we just turn our attention back to the Good Shepherd and we offer prayer that our faith might be stronger, that our faith might be stronger and our eyes riveted to the Good Shepherd. See, we're not even praying that these troubles will go away. We're praying that our faith will be stronger. Because for Peter, it wasn't anything about the waves. The waves were high, and the waves were dangerous. What it was about was his faith. He wouldn't even notice the waves if his faith was strong. But as soon as he did, as soon as he looked away from the Good Shepherd, then he saw everything that was wrong. We see that so many times, don't we? Everything is wrong. Everything is dangerous. Everything is overwhelming. If we look away from that good shepherd. See, we do have a tendency to wonder, though. We're like children. We're like children. We're like sheep that tend to stray because of sin. We tend to lose our focus. And that shepherd is a lot like a parent in some ways. You know, when a, when a little kid starts to walk, parents are chasing them all over the place because they're getting into trouble. They're sticking things into electrical outlets. They're running into traffic. And they're touching things they should not be touching because they don't know any better. We have that tendency to stray. That's why what we pray for is enough faith to keep our eyes on the shepherd. Enough faith 
to keep our eyes on the shepherd. The shepherd will direct us to what's good. The shepherd will protect us. We don't protect ourselves. We don't even know there are troubles around us. If our faith in the shepherd is strong, if our eyes are upon the shepherd, our eyes need to be upon the shepherd, always our eyes on the shepherd. Our good shepherd has endless patience. There's a reason why Jesus, our good shepherd, has endless patience. And that's because our good shepherd loves us so much that even if we have times when we don't keep our eyes on the good shepherd, we will be sought out, just like I sought out the children today. Some of them tried to stay hidden, but I found them out. And God finds us out too. Our good shepherd has endless patience, endless steadfast love, and will always seek us out no matter where we go, and will chase us. There's a, there's a poem by Francis Thompson. It's a work titled, The Hound of Heaven. Our good shepherd is like a hound following us. Now, if you've ever hunted with hounds, you know that they're going to follow that scent. They, they want to find what they're looking for. That's a good poem because uh, it reminds us that even though sin makes us run from the Good Shepherd, and one of the children did run, as a matter of fact, right behind the altar there, trying to avoid me. Even though we run, the Good Shepherd is going to find us because of that overwhelming love. Listen to that poem. I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind in the midst of tears. I hid from him, and under running laughter of vested hopes, I sped and shot precipitated adown titanic glooms of chasm fears from those strong feet that followed after. But with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy, they beat those feet. And a voice beat more instant than the feet. All things betray thee who betrayest me. In other words, there was no place to hide. The shepherd would find you. Even creation would not hide you from the steadfast love of God, the hound of heaven. As sheep, we have a tendency to stray, but... God will find us down the nights and down the days because of that patience and grace and love. What does it take to be a good shepherd? Love. That patience is because of love. What does it take to be a good shepherd? A steadfast love for the sheep that will not let them go and seeking us out wherever we may go. It's a love that seeks us out down the nights and down the days and never lets us go. And if you have things that trouble you from day to day, if you're consumed by worry, pray for the faith to keep your eyes on the Good Shepherd and not the things that are worrying you. Pray for the faith to be strong enough to keep your eyes on the Good Shepherd, to keep our eyes fixed on the Shepherd who will protect us and lead us in the paths through which we should go. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have taught us in many ways to follow you and that one of the ways in which you have taught us has been to say the Lord's Prayer. And as we listen to your will, we listen as children, 
children who you have invited into your kingdom, and you have blessed the children for doing so. We pray together as you taught your disciples to, to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much. You have been listening to St. Paul United Church of Christ, 2030 Plank Road, Keokuk. Join our worship service at 10 a.m. with fellowship hour immediately following. Until next week, may God bless.